Hi, thank you for joining and everyone. I am um, actually in person at a residential hall in Winslow, Arizona. So um, just a brief introduction. Uh, um, I am Lisa Vandiver, and I am the Native Youth Program Manager. Like um, Ms. Nels has mentioned, I work for the National Congress of American Indians. Um, this scholarship success uh, workshop was really something that I thought would be beneficial for um, you know, seniors that are going to be graduating um, next month. So I'm really excited that you guys are allowing me to help you through your educational journey. Um, I think it's awesome that you all are interested in finding uh, resources that are available. And so let's continue. So this is a scholarship success um, workshop. So the objectives today, I just have um, the, what is a scholarship? Um, I'd like to go in more in depth than that. Uh, why should I apply for scholarships? There are benefits to, to getting and finding these resources. Uh, things to start collecting and remembering deadlines and frequently asked questions. So let's get started. So scholarship, what is a scholarship? Do you guys happen to know what a scholarship is? Okay, what's your definition definition of a scholarship? As you're drinking. <laughs> money, money is given to local vocational schools, trade schools, universities, it's all based on criteria that is set by organizations and things that give it to you, like wow. financial support for it. Wow, I love that. Yes, that is, you are spot on. So scholarships are definitely a funding source to provide to you as a student to attend these different areas of whether or not you want to go to a university, um, a technical college, or even um a, a tribal college. So again, like you mentioned, they are merit-based, meaning they are looking at the grades that you have. They're looking at the different areas of um, experience and possibly your passions um, and, and things that you possibly worked on while you were in high school. Need-based is usually a criteria that um, would fit with uh, whether or not you um, filled out your FAFSA. So I know you guys uh, had workshops possibly with FAFSA and, and learned how to utilize those Pell Grants, but um, another opportunity is uh, because majority of us are Native, um, we have that opportunity to look at those funding sources through our tribes. Um, specifically with the Navajo tribe, we not only have our tribal like Navajo Nation scholarship, but we also have our chapter house scholarships. There's different um, organizations that um, this young man had mentioned um, to look at nonprofits, organizations that are really excited to help, you know, youth um, that are, are looking at higher education. <coughs> So why should I apply for scholarships? The benefits, uh, you reduce out-of-pocket costs for tuition. Um, most of the time you're able to get this opportunity of funding and not have to pay it back. Um, that's the difference between a scholarship and a loan. Um, if you go to most tribal colleges, they don't offer loans anymore because of student debt rising and rising higher and higher. So that's one great thing about um, TCUs, tribal college and universities, is that they're um, omitting the, the option of loans and really providing these opportunities for students to look at um, scholarships. And scholarships are really allowing you to um, achieve higher grades. You're able to highlight it on your resume. Um, and we'll get into what a resume is in a bit. 
but you're also able to um, get these benefits because of our diversity, because we're native. Um, you know, that would be like a criteria for, for um, some scholarships. Um, so again, on the last, uh, the bottom one creates a benchmark to meet while in school for future funding. Um, so remember, how we have to have a certain GPA. And what is a GPA? Grade point average. So we have a grade point average, even in high school, um, colleges look at that. They make sure that this person is a serious student and we're gonna admit them into this school because they're showing that they're serious through the four years at high school. Um, that's one thing to remember that your GPA is going to be considered for these scholarships and um, continuing funding. They want to make sure that this individual that they're awarding this money is going to continue their education and, and they're going to follow through with um, what areas they, they want to uh, pursue. So the next one is a portfolio. Do any of you guys happen to have a portfolio done? So um, I like that because I will be, um, I think uh, later after this workshop, I, I'd like to get with um, Ms. Nels and, and possibly get this template and these portfolios situated because we need to make sure that you have the letters of recommendation. Um, do you guys have a specific teacher that you guys are pretty close to at school right now? So build those relationships. Um, the letter of recommendation, there's a specific way to ask for these and to request it. Um, please don't ask them to write you a letter the day of a deadline. <laughs> so I've seen this before and I've done it before because you know I had that relationship with um, a student that came to me and said, I really need this scholarship for, um, for providing me um, help and paying tuition. So I could, you know, can you write this letter? And, and most of the time, it's not um, a heavy lift. It's usually just um, making sure that I have that um, information on that student. So it helps to have a relationship. It helps to know that person. So I would recommend because you guys are all close to Miss Nicole here, I would, you know, request that letter of recommendation now so that she can make sure that she writes every single letter for every single person that's sitting in this room and is able to say, hey, they came to every workshop that, you know, NCAI came and held. She, you know, connected us to these other resources and, and these other opportunities. And I know some of you had mentioned you were in Unity. So that is one highlight you could always put on your resume. Um, and, and if you're close to the individuals, um, I think you have a uh, district or representatives, uh, regional representatives, if you're close to them, um, I would, you know, possibly reach out to them and see if they're able to write a letter of recommendation. Um, and do you guys know what I mean by letter of recommendation? Okay, so, um, you know, let them recommending that, you know, you're an awesome student, you're an amazing student, you're doing this, this, and this. And, and it's good to help them with like a sheet, just letting them know things that they might not know. You're in, you know, this club, you're um, providing service projects here. Um, you do uh, tutoring after school with third graders. You know, there's things that they may not know, but, you know, letting them um, know by providing that information uh, ahead of time is helpful. Um, so a resume, do you guys have resumes? Awesome, great. So uh, a resume, you're gonna wanna ex um, list out the experiences. Maybe you don't have an actual job, but I love to say if you had have odd gigs, um, that's something you'd wanna highlight. Say I, you know, you may not be, um, working at an actual job like where you know it's nine to five because you guys are high school students maybe on the weekends you help your grandma clean her yard every saturday and that's like 
you know, something that you do monthly. Um, and, and that's an opportunity you can list. Um, there are things like babysitting. Um, you can get recommendations from your babysitter uh, or the person who hires you to babysit. Um, I think the, the uh, creativity is really up to you. So if you guys have um, different experiences, list it. Um, there's no right or wrong way to write a resume at this point because you guys are still starting out. Um, uh, another thing is uh, having that letter of acceptance. I think at this point, you guys should have um, possibly applied for the schools that you like, um, what you're interested in. Maybe they're um, U of A, just going to throw it out there. Um, they have, you know, an excellent teaching uh, school and, and they have opportunities um, for Native American students that um, has free tuition. So, you know, you're looking at these schools that have these other opportunities that will really highlight um, your passion and, and the areas that you want to go to. Um, if you haven't found a specific school, start looking. This is the time to start uh, really doing that research and finding areas that you're interested in. Um, I know with uh, the University of Arizona has a medical school, so maybe you're wanting to go into biology or anything science-y, um, and, and you're going to, you know, go towards that, that area, um, but I think um, the Arizona State University is really known for their Indian policy um, uh, career and, and all of their uh, different types of policy and advocacy um, areas of study. So, I mean, there are different things and different um, areas of study that you'd want to look into and, and make sure that you're, you're being picky, just as picky as the universities are with us. We're going to make sure that we're picking the ones that are right for us. Um, so make sure that you are applying, getting those letters of acceptance, because those are required for most scholarships that you're applying for. Um, transcripts. Make sure to get official transcripts so that you guys have them on hand. And when you get them, do not open the letter. It has official stamped on there for a reason. So once it's um, opened, it's unofficial. And so that that will not no longer be considered. Um, with transcripts, I think with the the high school here, they they require um, a couple weeks uh, of like, time to have it requested and be sent to the school that you you were um, applying to. So um, keep that in mind. Also keep in mind like um, or keep a track of, of the grades that you're receiving now um, so that you can highlight that in your resume. Uh, another thing is writing samples. Um, how many of you guys are good writers? Woohoo, we got one hand up. So if you're not a good writer, this is where I would really emphasize having samples so that you can refer back to. Maybe, um, you know, set aside an evening and work with Miss Nels here and see if she's happy to help you with like answering a question. And one question could require, you know, a good two, three paragraphs. And those paragraphs need to be copy edited, um, just like, you know, my job, we go through a process of making sure that everything is up to par. We're making sure that everything is really, you know, um, at that point where we want to share with those uh, scholarship uh, organizations that, you know, we can write a sentence. We can, you know, you're prepared enough to, to answer those questions um, fully and successfully. So um, one of the other opportunities, um, like I mentioned, are tribal opportunities. Um, another one is community scholarships. Uh, there are so many more Native organizations that have um, established a way to create funding for youth. So look into those opportunities. Um, one specific thing I'd really like to highlight is the university or college you're going to. So if you decide to go to, like I mentioned, U of A or um, one of the state schools here in Arizona, they all, I think most of them, I think U of A and NAU offer 
free tuition for Native Americans. But there's also these other costs you have to think of. Flagstaff is not cheap. It's so expensive to live in and the cost of living is getting higher and higher. So you have to think about, yes, I gotta pay for school, but you also have to pay for all these other things that are, are gonna be um, adding up as you're in school. So not only do you pay for tuition, you have to think about books, you have to think about materials because um, you all want to have nice clothes when you go to school. You're going to have to, you know, save up money or um, apply for more scholarships or get a job and, and be able to pay for these different things that come up. Um, another thing is rent or if you're going to be staying in student housing. One thing to remember with student housing is I think most schools, they require you to pay the full amount at the very beginning of the semester. And most of the time, they're around two to $5,000 um, to stay in the dorm, even though um, that is very costly, it is a good experience to be on campus. Um, but look into those specific colleges that you're, you're, you're interested in. Um, I, I um, for undergraduate, I was looking at education as one of um, my areas because I wanted to be a teacher. And one of the big things with the Navajo Nation is they have a shortage of teachers. Not only does the Navajo Nation have a shortage, I think our pretty much our country has a shortage. So there are so many different areas that um, have been developed. And when I went to the uh, university that I went to for undergraduate, they created they created a scholarship specifically for teachers so that they can, you know, increase the amount of teachers that um, come out of that school. So just keep in mind, there are scholarship opportunities. There's a screenshot. Um, I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but this is one example um, with our Navajo tribe. We have the um, Office of Navajo Nation um, Scholarship and Financial Aid. So this is uh, something that you'll you'll be seeing and you'll want to make sure that you apply because they, they give a good amount of, of funding. Um, Keep in mind, they have like these little newsletters when you sign up for different things. And I just happened to get one um, because I, I myself am uh, a student. So I actually, um, you know, do this and, and request funding for my own um, education. So you can see the deadline is June 25th but you wanna get started on all this stuff. They have a really long checklist. So if you guys ever like go onto the website, onnsfa.org, that um, will allow you to create, and I will show you this next slide. Oh, sorry, that is not it. So this next one, um, just keep in mind the, the different uh, deadlines that are um, applicable to each application that you that you are um, applying for. So the next slide is deadlines. So I mentioned before, um, they will most likely not accept your application past the deadline. There's so many students that are trying to get this you know, free money that they want to make sure that this person is going to meet a deadline and, and that's why those deadlines are there. So keep that in mind. Uh, remember, um, mark your calendars, do everything and anything you can to remember what is, um, when that scholarship is due, um, what letters or what different areas of um, material you need, like what I mentioned, the portfolio that we can work on later um, and, and keep that in mind. Um, so again, these are just tips, work on it early. If you log in, create your password and find out that there's five different questions, you know, work on a question, you know, every two days. And then by, you know, the end of uh, a week of seven days, maybe you'll be done and you'll have um, and maybe an advisor like Nicole to look over your, your content and see if um, everything you wrote is, is good and, and worthy of being submitted. So um, that's just another tip to, to include in your scholarship. So 
Um, also look at what is required before the day of it being due. Um, that's just a, a little thing that I really want to emphasize is that making sure that you have all of that material. And of course you will because you're going to have a portfolio. Keep in mind the time zone. So I love that I live in Arizona, but um, we're mountain standard time, uh, which is different from mountain time uh, in Colorado. It's an hour ahead. Um, and uh, because I work for the a national organization that's headquartered in Washington, D.C., I actually work on East Coast time. So I, I have to always keep time zones in mind. Um, so if you see a scholarship, make sure you look at that, those little three letters after the time that it needs to be submitted. So I think with um, the Navajo Nation, it's, um, it's usually mountain daylight time, which is um, an hour ahead of our time in Arizona. And um, there are scholarships depending on where those organizations are. You know, they they have their their time um, deadlines as well. So I know um, that was a lot of information. Does anyone have any questions so far? Okay. Does everybody have their laptops with them? No. Okay. So we have one person with their laptop. Woohoo. Okay. So this is an example, and I'm just going to highlight that this is um, what I put in my, um, my PowerPoint just so that we can see what um, this is a partner organization, American Indian College Fund. They're one of the biggest um, scholarship opportunities. If you can see, they have everything listed on their website. So you'll see the eligibility, um, that grade point average is at 2.0, which is pretty, you know, um, significantly low where you're able to obtain it. And I think you guys, you know, I think that's like a C average. So as long as you get a C or above, you should be able to, to apply. Um, and then they have different things like the documentation needed. You have a digital photo. Um, maybe you wanna get that good selfie in. Um, the tribal affiliation with Navajos, we have CIB, uh, the Certificate of Indian Blood. So definitely need to make sure you have that green paper. Do you know what I'm talking about? The green sheet? Yes, that's, uh, that's us. That's how we know we're um, Navajo. And you're able to, to upload that. So making sure that you have um, the right equipment to upload it. So it's usually sometimes a photo. If you have your phone, just take a photo of it and you're able to upload it there. Um, transcripts, like I said, you have to go to your school to, to request these. So make sure that you go to Ruby at um, Winslow High School and make sure she, she sends those uh, official transcripts. Um, when you're in college, you're gonna be wanting this funding to last. So you're not just applying this coming May or this year, you're gonna be applying ongoing. So next year around the same time, you're gonna be doing the same thing. So when you are applying, so you're gonna apply now and you're gonna have your sign-in. So remember, um, most scholarships have this type of layout. They'll have you provide your email, you'll provide or create a password and make sure you remember those passwords because you're gonna be using them um, not only this year, but next year. Um, so you're gonna continuing uh, the, you know, the, the routine of signing in and password and, um, and then you're able to uh, learn about this. If you guys want, we can watch the short video because it is pretty short. Welcome to the walkthrough of the American Indian College Fund scholarship application. When you go to www.collegefund.org forward slash scholarships, you will arrive at our scholarships page. We highly recommend you use your desktop computer or laptop to fill out the application. Do not use your mobile device. You'll need three things before you begin. One, your tribal affiliation or proof of tribal enrollment or certificate of Indian blood from a state or federally recognized tribe. 
If you're a descendant, you'll need to submit your birth certificate along with your parents' or grandparents' proof of enrollment. To contact your tribal government and get more info about their enrollment requirements, visit the Bureau of Indian Affairs website. The second is a professional photo. Applicants' photos yep, are shared with the They are excited to get to know the students that received their awards. For this reason, we encourage you to provide a nice photo of yourself that you're comfortable and proud to share with the donor that made their scholarship possible. We discourage selfies or cropping yourself out of a group picture. The third item is a copy of your most recent unofficial transcript. Applicants can request this documentation from the Office of the Registrar at their high school or college. If you haven't applied with us within the last year, you will need to break a brand new account. The College Fund is using a new application system. New users will need to create a new profile. Please choose an email you check most frequently and a password you can remember easily. Once you click sign up, click create a profile to get started to begin. You can always edit your profile by clicking edit. Once it is complete, click create profile at the bottom of the screen. You can also click save draft and come back. But remember, all new users must set up a profile to complete the application. Once your profile is created, click get started to begin your application. If you're a returning scholar, please log in using your information from the last scholarship cycle. For returning applicants, you will see two application cards. One is labeled with your last year's application and the other with this year's. Please click on this year's application to get started. You will now see a new menu page with three application sections, scholarship application, extracurricular activities, and honors and distinctions. Each section must be completed before you can submit your application. In the first section, scholarship application, you will provide general information like your current school and grades and where you plan to go to school. Both new users and returning users must complete the scholarship application section. The most important part of the section is the reflective questions. These three questions allow you to tell us about your background, educational goals, and what is important to you. The questions include, what challenges have you overcome to attend college? What are your educational career goals? And how will completing your education impact the Native American community? Each answer has a 300 word limit and a 100 word minimum. We recommend that you write these before you begin your application. Edit them carefully and copy and paste them into the answer fields when you're ready to complete the section. If you're a returning scholarship recipient, you'll see the message on the screen. This means you do not need to edit your reflection responses or thank you letter. You can simply move on to the document upload field. Remember that you must submit a new application to be considered for a scholarship renewal. If your returning applicant did not receive a scholarship last year, you will see the following message on the screen. We encourage you to revise all of your questions before submitting this year's application. You can learn more about how questions are scored and discover writing tips at collegefund.org forward slash application dash tips. At the bottom of each section, you can save your work as a draft or mark as complete. You can change any of your information before submitting your application. After it is submitted, you cannot make any changes. In the other three sections, you'll add information about yourself, like cultural activities, and any awards or distinctions you have received. Click on the green Add New Item button to add each new entry. When you're done, click the white Close button, which will return you to your application dashboard. The last section, resume, is optional for both new and returning users, but we encourage you to complete if you are interested in an internship or career development opportunities. Returning users will see that there's action required for their extracurricular activities and honors and distinctions. We encourage you to review these listings and add or update any relevant details. You may edit these listings by clicking on the blue open button. If you haven't done so, return to the scholarship application section and click the blue mark complete button. This will return you to the application dashboard where the large green submit application button will be available to click at the top right of the page. No matter how complete your application is, it will not be submitted to the college fund for review until you click this button. 
Warning, you will not be able to change your application once it has been submitted. When you visit the application section of your dashboard, you will see your application with an under review status. If you apply by May 31st, you will hear from the scholarships team by early August. If you apply after that, you can expect to hear back from our team on a rolling basis. If selected, you will receive an email confirmation of your award and directions for the next step in your scholarship journey. We encourage you to monitor this portal as well as your email address for updates. We will contact you if any additional information is needed. You can also always call our office if you get stuck. We are also available through email, phone, or even social media at, at Native Pathways. It is our honor and privilege to support the education and career attainment of American Indian and Alaska Native students at the American Indian College Fund. We're excited that you are applying for the Full Circle Scholarship, and we wish you the best. So I will share the link with uh, Nicole, but it was pretty much a really good overview of what to expect. And, you know, as I mentioned before, they they had the um, the questions that were asked. So um, I know this portion was partially what I wanted to have everyone with their uh, Chromebooks so that you guys could go to this uh, website um, and, and get started. So um, we are actually done. So as far as like anything else, um, does anyone have any questions? Wasn't um, this scholarship supposed to have the American Indian College Fund closes May 31st. Yes. And I have a calendar of um, the scholarships that uh, I found. So, I mean, just a, a simple search. Uh, we can use the tools that we have, you know, use Google, search um, funding sources or even scholarships for Native Americans. Um, that gave me a good list. So, um, it, you know, when you guys have a uh, you know, those evenings alone and you're just dying to know how to get funding, you know, search and look, look it up. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you for your participation. Um, I am uh, going to see if we have any. Does anyone have any questions um, from the Zoom? Okay, no questions. Thank you. And oh, I got one question. Um, so, uh, I'm a, I recruited myself for Marines. And does that still work by any chance? Um, you signed up to be in the Marines already? Mm -hmm. Um, I think with them, uh, you have to do your service. And then, um, I, I think they have different ways of providing funding um for for school um I, i'm not quite sure like what the military offers i've seen like other individuals that go to school and are still considered military but that's like um i don't i'm not quite sure how that worked out but they get the gi bill too so oh wow Great. Well, if there are no questions, I am going to end um, the recording. So thank you all for joining. Thank you, Lisa.